Well, in an extraordinary disclosure, FBI Director James Comey confirmed on Monday that the FBI is investigating whether President Trump's campaign collaborated with Russia to sway the 2016 election. As you know, our practice is not to confirm the existence of ongoing investigations, especially those investigations that involve classified matters. But in unusual circumstances, where it is in the public interest, it may be appropriate to do so, as Justice Department policies recognize. This is one of those circumstances. I have been authorized by the Department of Justice to confirm that the FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government, and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. As with any counterintelligence investigation, this will also include an assessment of whether any crimes were committed. James Comey also said the FBI has no information that supports Trump's unsubstantiated claims that President Obama tapped Trump's phones in Trump Tower during the election. With respect to the president's tweets about alleged wiretapping directed at him by the prior administration, I have no information that supports those tweets, and we have looked carefully inside the FBI. The Department of Justice has asked me to share with you that the answer is the same for the Department of Justice and all its components. The department has no information that supports those tweets. Comey testified on Monday, along with NSA Director Admiral Mike Rogers, to talk about the hearing. We're joined by national security reporter Marcy Wheeler, who runs the site EmptyWheel.net. Still with us, Pulitzer Prize-winning New York Times reporter Eric Lipton. In December, he co-authored a major investigation headlined The Perfect Weapon, How Russian Cyberpower Invaded the U.S. Marcy, you covered this hearing very closely yesterday. Um, talk about how unusual it is and what you thought was was most significant? Well, it's actually the third or fourth uh, hearing that we've had on the Russia investigation. The confirmation, which we already knew, but the, the explicit confirmation that Trump's campaign is part of that was, was an important part of that. But I think even more interesting was way at the end of the hearing, an exchange between Elise, um, a, a congresswoman from upstate New York, and, uh, and Comey, where she asked why the FBI had not briefed Congress about this investigation until the last month, she said. And, um, and he explained that they hadn't uh, followed the normal policy, which, as he described, you go, to, you go to the DNI, you go to Justice, you go to the White House, and then you brief Congress because it was so sensitive. And he sort of suggested that, that the order there couldn't be done with this investigation. And so I think that that provided, in addition to the confirmation he gave early in the hearing, some sense of just how sensitive and, uh, as the congresswoman said, how, how uh, serious this investigation actually is. Uh, Marcy, we actually have a clip of that, uh, of that exchange uh, with a Republican New York congresswoman, at least Stefanik, questioning uh, Director Comey uh, about uh, when he notified the congressional leadership about the agency's investigation, which actually began in, uh, the investigation began in July. Here's that clip. So just to drill down on this, um, if, if the open investigation began in July and the briefing of congressional leadership only occurred recently, why was there no notification prior to the recent, the past month? I think our decision was it was a matter of such sensitivity that we wouldn't include it in the quarterly briefings. So when you state our decision, uh, is that your decision? Is that usually your decision what gets briefed uh, in those quarterly updates? No, it's usually the decision of the head of our counterintelligence division. And just, uh, again, to get the detailed uh, on the record, why was the decision made not to brief uh, senior congressional leadership until recently, when the investigation had been open since July, um, a very serious investigation? Why was that decision made to wait months? Because of the sensitivity of the matter. That was a uh, Republican uh, New York Congresswoman uh, Elise Stefanik uh, questioning uh, Comey, uh, Director Comey, yesterday. Uh, Marcy Wheeler, your uh, reaction? Yeah. 
as I said, um, the, the, one of the implicit things there is that the FBI was keeping, at least for a period, uh, possibly at the beginning of the Trump administration, was keeping the, the description of this investigation so narrowly held such that they weren't willing to brief. And we're not even talking the full intelligence committees. We're talking just the gang of four. So Devin Nunes and Adam Schiff, um, uh, Richard Burr, and now um, uh, Congressman uh, Senator Warner from, from Virginia. So four people they weren't willing to brief because they were keeping it so closely held. That suggests how concerned they were that the investigation might be compromised by it leaking. As the FBI confirms it's investigating um, the Donald Trump campaign, the White House is attempting to distance itself from two former top aides, uh, General Michael Flynn and Paul Manafort, who both have established ties to Russia. This is White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer yesterday. Even General Flynn was, was a volunteer of the campaign. Um, and then, obviously, there's been this discussion of, of Paul Manafort, who played a very limited role for a very limited amount of time. But beyond— But are you the chairman of the Hey, John, Jonathan, hold on. Can you, can you stop interrupting other people's questions? Hey, role. Jonathan, somebody's asking a question. It's not your press briefing. Julie's asking a question. Please calm down. Just Julie. Are you saying, then, that the president is aware of contacts that Manafort— No, no, had nothing had that hasn't been previously discussed. So, Marcy Wheeler, that's uh, Sean Spicer trying to say, you know, oh, this guy, uh, um, General Flynn, was just a volunteer in Manafort he didn't spend much time with. Right. And we've gotten confirmation from one of Eric's colleagues uh, last night of um, details that had been leaking on the Internet in the last two months about $750,000 that was laundered to Manafort. There's a couple of other shoes, I think, that are about to drop on Manafort. So we've got details now fleshing out about Manafort taking money from uh, Russian favorable people in Ukraine. And, and presumably, given what Comey testified to yesterday, the White House, or at least some people in the White House, have now been briefed on the scope of the investigation. So I find it very interesting that at the precise moment that uh, Comey was laying all of this out before the House Intelligence Committee, um, Sean Spicer was here trying to distance himself from these two people who uh, would be among the first people targeted in the investigation. So it certainly seems like confirmation from the White House as well that uh, of the direction that the FBI is going in. I'd like to get back to uh, Eric Lipton of The New York Times. Y your reaction to yesterday's stunning testimony uh, from, uh, from the FBI director, uh, both in terms of the uh, ongoing uh, investigation of the links, uh, pot potential links of some key Trump uh, campaign officials uh, to the Russian efforts to sway the U.S. election, and also his uh, discounting of uh, of Trump's claims that President Obama tapped his phones. I mean, I, you, you call them stunning. I was actually quite unimpressed with that hearing, and I didn't find much about it stunning or surprising or that informative. I think that, you know, the fact that the FBI is investigating Russian, you know, interference in the election and that it would be looking as part of that investigation, which we've known for months is going on, that, of course, it would have to address questions as to whether or not there was any coordination with the Trump campaign, even if it, it concludes that there was not, these are questions that they obviously would have to address. And the notion that there was no evidence that, you know, that, that, that the Trump Tower had been wiretapped is something that both the Democrats—I'm sorry, the Republicans in the House and the Senate have said. Um, and so, again, that was not that surprising. And, I mean, to me, what was most evident through that hearing was the, was the, the, the extent to which both the Democrats and the Republicans were seeing it as an opportunity to sort of pontificate and, you know, share their points of view, as opposed to really digging more deeply into the questions that are out there relative to exactly what happened during the 2016 election. And, and you know, I think that it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, that we don't, you know, even, you know, calling Comey in a public setting like that before you have really, you know, made much progress in your investigation, I, I think that, to me, I would much be much more interested in, in having a serious investigation that would, you know, draw new facts out that they then could then question Comey on, on the record. But it, I don't see any evidence so far that they have the staff or really that, you know, the use of subpoenas 
to really dig more deeply into exactly what happened. And, and I think that's unfortunate, because there's a lot of open questions that there's a lot of ground that a, a powerful committee could, could really dig into on this that, and, so far, I don't see they're doing. And what about simply the question? He chose to publicly announce that um, they were possibly investigating Hillary Clinton, even at that time, uh, saying at the same time we are looking at the other candidate, Donald Trump, and the campaign's ties to Russia. Yeah, I guess, I mean, your point, yeah, is well taken as to why, if he felt the need to publicly announce that in a letter to Congress and this investigation. Although, at the time, in July, what they began was an investigation of the Russian hacking. So it's unclear exactly when they began to address questions as to what role, uh, potentially, any Trump candidate folks played in that. So it's it, you don't know that that became a part of the examination until potentially after the election was over. So for him simply to have said in, in, in the fall of 2016 that they were examining the potential for Russian interference in the election would, would not have been—I don't think that would have answered your point. Um, then you have uh, Comey addressing the issue that you investigated, Eric, which was, would he have done things differently when it came to alerting the DNC, a low-level person ending up talking to a consultant at the DNC? He said, yes, um, I would have sent out a larger flare. We would have, we just would have kept banging and banging on the door. I guess I should have walked over there myself. Yeah, I mean, I think that even the fact that they did not begin formally investigating uh, but the the apparent interference uh, by Russia in the American election until July of 2016, uh, you know, uh, that that they 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 had evidence in, you know, in in a sort of October of 2015 that that there was uh, Russian hackers that had it, it sort of had gone into the the computer system of the DNC, and that's when an FBI agent first notified a low-level technical person, like a, a you know kind of the tech help guy, and that's who they called on the phone to say, by the way, it looks like basically you have Russian hackers inside the DNC's computer system, and it took months and months and months before it really got elevated at the DNC, and it wasn't until May of 2016 that the DNC confirmed that they were present in their computer system and that they had been hacked and compromised. And, and then that began the whole series of, 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 of you know, disclosures that, that ultimately brought down the leadership of the DNC and that, you know, that, that was months of, of documents that then became public. And so, you know, why the FBI did not escalate that sooner and, and, and why the, investig the formal investigation was not announced and why it was not attributed to Russia earlier than October, which was the first time that the federal government actually formally attributed it, those are all important questions that we still don't have answers to. And we're going to have to leave it there. But, of course, we'll continue to look at all of these issues. We want to thank Eric Lipton, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist with The New York Times, and Marcy Wheeler, uh, independent journalist who covers national security. Her website, EmptyWheel.net. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.